I'm going to demo the steps necessary to make the Krenov trestle horse. I've got the cutlass to build materials here. I have rough milled all my parts, so I've, I've checked off on the list what parts are which. I've just used material that was laying around the shop. What I do on these, and this is typical for any project that I do, I will go through the cut list and I've got the parts numbered, so the legs are one, the feet are two, etc. And as I harvest the parts, the, the rough parts from my material, I will check off on the list what part I've, I've got cut. And then on the end of each part, I'll put the appropriate number. Uh, that way, as I S4S these parts, those numbers will still typically be there. So up until I cut them to length, I'll still know what parts are what. I'm going to go ahead and mill all these parts now. And when I get to cutting and joinery, I'll cover that in more detail. <laughs> I've got my parts milled now, and these are the uh, legs, these are the feet. Uh, the feet are a little bit uh, thicker than the legs by roughly an eighth of an inch. I have arranged these so these are all facing up. I uh, just looked at the grain here and it's not that big a deal, but as long as I have the option also on the uh, leg parts. I've got these so this is the bottom and that's the top. So the first thing I need to do is uh, create the joinery. I'm going to use uh, loose tenons and I'm going to mark the bottoms of the legs for the size of the uh, tenons or the mortises and then I'll transfer that information to the uh, feet here. So I'm going to put uh, one of the legs in the vise here and I'm going to <clears throat> come in a quarter inch from each edge. So I'll put a mark there and set, set that to match. So there's my quarter there. And I also need to center the mortise on here. So I'm going to use a 5 16 tenon. So I'll, I'll center, center this on here between the two uh, marks, in, two inch marks, and then I'm going to come over five, roughly five, 30 seconds, right? Half of 5 16 and I'm, I'm going to mark that like that and that should okay so that's right on 516 so I'll use I'll use this this one to mark the rest of them and I should have uh, I should have kept this measurement here there we go so I'll do that to the rest of these I'm going to mark the mortise in the foot next. So first thing I need to do is find the middle. I'll mark that. And my uh, mortise in the end of the leg is 
just it's about a 30 second under two and a quarter. So that means I want to come out just under one and an eighth on, on either side. So that, uh, yeah, that, if I measure that end to end, that looks great. I think what I'm going to do, just to make sure these are consistent, I'm going to come in from either end. Now, I, I could do that, but as I'm doing this, I'm thinking this is, this is going to be easier if I just put all these together. That's going to be much easier. So I'll just line these up and transfer the line that way. That's much quicker and easier. Now I also need to mark center this way. I'll do what I did before. Okay, and I only need to do that on one of them because when I use the slot mortar show, once I've got the height set, it's set. So I'm ready to go to the slot mortiser next. I just milled my tenon material, so I, I uh, milled it down till it fit in the uh, mortise here. And it fits about the same in both parts. Uh, sometimes <clears throat> the mortise in the face grain is a little bit bigger than the mortise in the end grain. I think that happens because the face grain is a little more difficult to cut, so the bit vibrates a little bit more. Uh, so, so quite often, if that's the case, I'll mill the tenon material to match the bigger mortise, and I'll uh, plane it down or sand it down a little bit on half of it to fit in the end grain mortise, so that it fits good in both. But Depending on the sharpness of the bit and the material you're using, uh, sometimes they can be the same. In this case, they, the mortises seem to be pretty much the same. Also, I should point out that typically when I'm doing a loose mortise and tenon, I will make the tenon fit, uh, the mortise and tenon fit tightly in the end grain part. So the tenon, when it's glued in, can only go in one place. It fits nicely in that piece. And then in the other part, I'll make the mortise a little bit oversized so that I can locate it. So say if it was at the top of a leg, I want some wiggle room, right, to make sure that the top is flush. In this case, it's different. I want the tenon to actually locate in this part. So in this case, I have made the mortises in both parts the same width so that my tenon will align the parts accurately. So because of that, I'm going to take my tenon material and I'm going to cut it to pretty much match the width of this mortise. As uh, we measured before, I think it's just a little bit smaller than two and a quarter by about a 32nd. So I'm going to cut it just a little bit over two and three sixteenths. That, it looks, actually that's a little bit tight. That, that just barely fits in there, so I'm going to take a little bit more off of there. Okay, good. So I now have just a little bit of clearance there. I should also point out that I, I typically will make the tenon the same material as my parts. I didn't have any maple just laying around, so I'm using ash, which is you know, relatively the same hardness. Um, I'm sure it's going to work just fine.
I've got my tenon material here and I need to round over the edges to match the mortise. Because this material is 5 16 ideally I would have half that uh, 5 30 seconds a radius and it turns out I do have that bit which is kind of a rare bit but the uh, Rockler sells a 5 30 second round over bit. Uh, if I did not have that you could choose a 1 8 or 3 16 you typically want to go if anything a little bigger than uh, half of this diameter not smaller because if, if I use the smaller radius bit then perhaps this would not fit in my mortises. I've got the <clears throat> bearing lined up with the fence. Uh, for the first pass it I could only use the bearing without the fence, but when I flip the material over, uh, because of the radius that would have already exist, it wouldn't ride correctly on the bearing. So you want to you want to use the fence and the bearing uh, aligned to to do this step. I will now measure the depth of my mortises. And I'm going to cut this material uh, a sixteenth inch shorter than the depth of the two mortises together. So the depth of my mortise is about one and a sixteenth. If I double that, that's two and an eighth. And then subtract a sixteenth. So I want to make my uh, tenons about two and a sixteenth long. So I'm going to set the distance from the blade to the end of this piece of MDF to that uh, dimension and clamp that in place. So I'll get a clean edge here and then I'll just use that that corner to uh, get my length. That's a nice safe way to do this for cutting small parts. Now that I have my tenons cut to length I want to knock this edge down a little bit so that when I glue these in, that sharp edge, I don't want it to push uh, push the glue all down there. So I'm going to, I've got some 120 grit sandpaper here. I'm just going to put a, just a light chamfer on both edges, both ends. All right, and then... <clears throat> glue these in. Now I always glue them into the end grain first. So once that's in place, it's no different than having a regular mortise and tenon. Um, I could still, if I want to, sand these parts, do whatever. Whereas if I glued them in uh, this part first, that, that's going to make it more difficult to, to do anything to that part. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on each inside edge here and that will kind of run down inside there and then I want to make sure that surface wasn't quite enough glue make sure that surface is nice and wet with uh, with the glue There, okay, so that's that's good. Also want to make sure there's glue on the, the, the surface is wet with glue. Just I kind of just rub the glue into the wood. Doesn't you know if there's much on here it's gonna get pushed out. So I just kind of work it into the into the face there. And Ended up with a little too much glue there. All right, and then make sure that. Need something a little more solid there to hit that with. So that's, I'll do that for each of these. And then I will uh, finish prepping these parts before 
I glue the legs to the uh, to the feet.